Hey everybody, it's Taylor with Boyston Grove, and today we're gonna make the Klingon Mechleth. The Klingon Mechleth? The Kl This funny looking sword. We don't even know what it is. Let's get into it. This project was actually inspired by y'all. After watching my Batleth video, someone mentioned in the comments that there's a lot of cool weapons in the Star Trek universe and I should try making another one. So after looking up some of the suggestions that they made, I landed on this one, the Klingon Mechleth. This was kind of used as a short sword or a second hand weapon and after looking up some references of it being used on the TV show, I gotta say, it looks kinda lame and I think we can do a lot better. I've had this 1 8 inch sheet of aluminum in my shop since we've moved in. In fact, I'm pretty sure it was here when we moved here. I made a quick template of the sword and I will make this template available on our website if you're interested. Because this aluminum is so thin and flimsy, I decided to cut out two so I could laminate them together. This whole time I was setting up, I was having fond memories of the other metal projects that I've made, with big sparks flying and primitive forging. Unfortunately, none of this applies to aluminum. It's such a soft, pliable metal that you can cut it with a simple jigsaw and bend it by hand. A little underwhelming, I know. That's a bummer. Okay. After cutting out the two halves, I cleaned them up on the belt sander, knocking off any spurs or jagged edges. I had this brilliant idea that I would cover two boards with tape and sandwich the two pieces between them so I could get nice, even clamping pressure over the whole surface. I used two-part epoxy for the adhesive, and I just ended up clamping the two halves together. The glue was so slippery that when I tried to sandwich the pieces between the wood, they kept sliding off of each other. After letting it cure for a day, I used my bench sander to bevel all the edges and refine the shape. I also used a sanding attachment on my Dremel to get into the hard to reach spots. To polish the blade, I started with some 600 grit sandpaper in my orbital sander. Then I moved over to my drill press and used some buffing and polishing discs. I think it came out pretty good for aluminum. I thought the blade was looking a little plain, so I sketched out the Klingon symbol and used the Dremel with a stone bit to carve it out. Now we're getting somewhere. Ooh, very nice. Most of the examples that I found of this sword just have a simple leather wrap for the handle, but I think we can do a lot better. So I scrounged up a piece of mahogany from the console table that I built, and I cut off a nice healthy slice. Using the sword as a reference, I traced out some handle scales and cut them out on the scroll saw. That's right, I know what a scale is. I watch Forged in Fire. Then I used my router to put a chamfer on the outside edge of both pieces. I was out of clear two-part epoxy, so I decided to go with this high heat epoxy that I had. 
I'm not really sure why I had it, but it worked just fine all the same. I let the first scale set a bit before I attached the second scale. Once it was all set, I cleaned it up with the sander. I decided the handle looked a little too plain, so I drilled out some holes and rummaged up a piece of brass rod to use as pins. I sanded it smooth one last time and then I used some boiled linseed oil for the finish. All right, Taylor, let's talk about your Klingon Mechlet. It was able to cut through all of the samples with absolutely no issues, and the edge is still razor sharp. And I must say that it fits so comfortably in my hand. It is a joy to wield this weapon. It is like no other Mechlet that I have ever held, and the balance is just exquisite. Your Mechlet, sir, it will kill. All right, well that does it for our out-of-the-box Klingon sword build. It's been a while since I've made some cool weapon like this. I'll leave links to the other weapons we've made in the description below if you want to check those out. I gotta tell you, if I didn't know this was aluminum, I would say that this looks like a legit sword. I even like all the blemishes because it kind of gives it that war-torn look. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you like these kind of out-of-the-box, off-and-left-field builds? Maybe we'll look into some other cool things that we can try making. And like I said before, I also have the template for this sword on our website with the scales. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. Be safe and have a great day.